the when when constructing the uh, the deck, one of the things I want to say about or some of the many things I'm going to say about spreads or layouts. You can think of, uh, I use the two terms interchangeably, first of all, spreads and layouts. And what it is, it's an order of cards that are placeholders, so that adds a second meaning. It's like creating a sentence structure and then putting the specific words in. All right? So, the first one here, Michael Motivational Moment, uh, one card. The yin-yang, the duality spread, is kind of like, you know, should I do it or not do it? You know, yes or no kind of questions. Synthesis spread, you, know, you have a positive, negative, neutral. If I do something, you know, this, is, this is the good, uh, the part that will be useful. This will be the downside. And then uh, the neutral kind of gives you a, a piece of feedback of where to decide from. Notice we have one, two, three, four different three-card spreads. Now, the reason that's significant is because today, uh, when I cut you loose on your next exercise, I'm going to let you... Uh, Pull up your little books, and these 10 spreads start on page 19. And uh, I, will, I will have you do, I'm going to have you stick to probably three or four card spreads just so that you pick one, and then you're going to do another round of readings. But they're going to have, this, this time, the placements are going to have structure. Remember how we talked about the order of cards having significance? Okay, so what you're seeing here are the order of cards then and what they would in, impart to you as far as information. <clears throat> um, karma action spread. Uh, you know, interesting, especially for kind of intense experiences. Uh, your, your kind of predictive uh, information, future oracle spread. Uh, overleaves. Now, let me just say something about overleaves, and then I want to show you this, because this is way cool. Peter did this. An overleaf spread isn't necessarily trying, you know, uh, suggesting that you know you read, you want to find out your own overleaves so you uh, pull out the cards. Instead, what it involves is doing as Peter did and going in and separating out. Like here are the seven roll cards, and here are the seven attitude cards, and he's got them in separate, you know, piles. This, now, is, this is second set, by the way. I did this just so I could keep them organized that way and have the other one for flipping. So he's even done that for himself. He has this in this specific way for the specific purpose. <coughs> well, an overly spread would then say, you take each one of these stacks, and you may ask a situational question. And you'll get a set, you know, what's the role characteristic of this circumstance? So let's say, you, you know, you get artisan. And maybe it's indicating that you're starting something new. Uh, then you pick a goal card. Maybe it's uh, then it maybe comes up as submission, indicating that maybe you're going to have to keep your head down for a while and uh, uh, you know and, and follow somebody else's lead or example. Attitude. Maybe attitude is skeptic. Skeptic might say, well, it's, that's an artist and uh, you know secondary, so it suggests okay, you got to ask questions here, and so on. You get the idea of this. Uh, I tell people I wouldn't re recommend or would believe that necessarily you're going to uh, get um, your own overleaves out of selecting an overleaf spread, but I have found it really interesting to ask about a circumstance and then have a, 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 an entire set of each of the categories, like a, an overleaf profile, in the same way that a person would have on so good circumstances. <clears throat> <laughs> the two I haven't read here are recent, are fairly recent. Not, well, actually, not anymore. They're they're probably nine months of a year. But they were the ones that came after the formulation of uh, the the rest of these. And I'm going to uh, walk you through each of these, or at least let you see what they look like uh, laid out. Uh, but the, one of the most interesting ones I think that uh, I'll show you is this thing called the family imprint spread. This is a really in depth and personal uh, layout. And uh, what it will suggest is the construction of, you know, of suggesting who in your life and how they influenced you and how it brings it into the present. And it's based on the work of, uh, if any of you ever heard of his name, Bert Hellinger. Hellinger? So, snake in there. And then the Revelation card spread. That's your largest analysis. That's ten cards. So, just to show you a little bit of these. <coughs> 
Well, all right, I'll come back to that. We're going to do an exercise where I'm actually going to have you uh, create your own layout, but that'll be that'll be later. This, this, those couple slides went out of order. <coughs> uh, motivation card spread, one card. Um, great meditation, you know, just have a quick hit. You want to just uh, look into something, single card. Yin yang, do it or don't do it. So let's let's uh, let's work on this uh, little one here. All right. Uh, so whatever this person's question is. Um, it involves uh, kind of a yes or no, uh, don't, do it or don't do it, okay? So, you notice I have a masculine position, the do it, and I have a feminine or yin position, don't do it. Now, when you look at that, what are your first impressions? Here you've got, the, you have the goal of acceptance and the negative pole of ingratiation for do it. And then, in the don't do it, you have the body type of Mars in the positive pull of endurance. Based on that, any, any feelings or sense or interpretations that come to mind? Whether you do, even if it's just a yay or nay, what would you say? Don't do it. Yay. Yeah. Stick it out. What, what's that? Someone said stick it out. Yeah. Oh, stick it out. Yeah. I heard up. Uh, of what? Well, I'm it is. Okay. The bang. The do it column. Yes, if I do it, I could do this, but I will have to deal with some ingratiation either in myself or other people. Right. If I don't do it, I will have to call on some endurance. So I see it as this. These are the conditions. Whether you know, in other words, it doesn't make the choice for me. It says these are. What Precisely. Conditions might come Precisely. Same for each choice. It looks like a really bad place to be right now. Yeah, I, I choose not to do it based yeah. on this spread. Yeah. It's one of the bad if you don't think. Yeah. Right, because yeah. if you were asking the question, you'd be saying, should I do it or not do it? Well, you, yeah. Right? And so, yeah, yeah. And, so, you know, and sometimes, <laughs> <Right>. I mean, <laughs> you know, some of the feedback I get from cards can, can be either fairly indifferent. Like there's a you know a, a, you know an, an either or is about the same, and uh, in which case what I would do in that I would do a tiebreaker, and by a tiebreaker is I pull another card, and I do that for clarification, and I see what you know where that kind of takes me. That's always by the way the 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 method by which if ever you find yourself stalemated by the implications of a reading. Pick another card and see if that helps to clarify or tilt it in one way or the other. Okay. Uh, with, yeah. the, um, with the fact that one is one is negative and one is positive, would you just take that? You know, looking at that, and say, do it? No, not necessarily. Don't do it. Yeah. You know, that's one layer, right? And as right. Suzanne said, it's not necessarily that. Um, but it, uh, when I see this, it means if I if I saw it and I said I, I'm going to do it, it means that yeah. It may be acceptable. You know, it may be something that gains me uh, a level of inclusion, acceptance, what have you, but I've got to do some sucking up yeah. uh, to get there. Now, maybe it's worth it. If I'm going to get a $50,000 bonus check, shoot, I'll say, uh -huh. present me those babies. I'm going to kiss them. <laughs> you know, I'm not that proud. Okay? All right, I'm not about a little ingratiation. Let's that's go. right. That's right. You know, as long as the payoff is good, the ingratiation can come. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, and endurance would be, God, I wish I had abs like that, I'll tell you. Well, it's like, I don't have that $50,000 job now, I have to endure that. Exactly. <laughs> I, I have to work it, man. I gotta go work that sucker is what I gotta do, you know. So there's any number of ways that you can interpret that. But again, for yourself, it's the key. And yet what we did, notice, is we went down a few layers. Make sense? All right. <clears throat> Now, here we go. Collaboration card spread. Uh, notice the placeholders. You, other, project outcome. Now, when you look at that, so you, mirror, a negative pole of essence twin, or shadow side, other, reservation, in positive pole of restraint, project outcome, cycle off completion. That sounds good. <laughs> so, I mean, just on, the, just on the face energy of that, any comments? B-I-V-O-R-C-E. 
Wait, wait, where? Did I spell that somewhere? I can't incarnate anymore. Project outcome. Recycling off. Oh, divorce. You know, by the way, the cycle off card came up once in in a person's reading about their relationship. Yep, cycle off. And it's like, it's done. Okay, see ya. Especially if this person has restraint, the other person has restraint. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if they like tying you up and you don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Are you telling us your preferences again? Come on, yeah. Okay, so uh, now but look at where the look at where the shadow side is. The shadow side's with me. Okay, so it might indicate that there's something going on. Some, so perhaps some ambivalence. My partner. God, look at that picture. If that isn't graceful. You know, this restraint could be that this is a person who really knows how to manage a project. You know, who can really hold it together. And discipline. Yeah. Discipline, absolutely. So, you know, it may be me, and here we have Freud, here we have Siggy up here going, Well, I don't know if I like this or not. They might not make me look good. I might look bad. But either way, it gets done. So, survey says, would you... Do you think that's a favorable reading for your collaboration? Yeah, definitely. Okay. So mirror, you, you know, even though yeah. mirror is the negative pole of that card, mm -hmm. presenting a, a service of being a mirror to a situation or a person can be very useful. It's very neutral, isn't it, in a way? Mm -hmm. it, it has an ambivalence. Now. It can also be very useful, is what I'm saying. Absolutely. So, so does it, it's not to take, you're going to be the negative person always saying, you know, you're going to be holding up a mirror to it so that that gives the reflection necessary for the restraint that brings you to your project outcome. Okay, so for you, it's an affirmative, yes? Oh, yeah. Okay, so Delilah, I noticed you shaking your head like that, I think. Right. Can you tell me your interpretation, how it strikes you, pardon me? Okay, so the shadow side, I wasn't seeing the, the part of mirror stuff being good. About it. Okay. So you're looking at yourself and you're seeing things that you don't want to see. There is restraint in the other person, It'll and, be. and yeah, I mean, the, she's a ballerina, but I mean, restraint says to me, holding back, basically. Mm. Okay. okay, and then the project outcome would be, well, it's time to move on, on both, on mm. both sides of the cards. But Interesting. And a completely, uh, by the way, a completely legitimate interpretation oh, yeah. based on what your experiences for those are. Mm. Any others? Um, yes, Peter. I'm just thinking while I'm hearing her speak that looking at these as kind of generic cards. Here's here's cards for a generic per relationship is less meaningful than I'm really thinking about this person. And here's all this content. Suddenly, the reserve of this person, this actual person, has a lot more meaning for me. And the cycle off could mean... Positive or negative, depending well, once on again, that. Yeah. Once again, the specificity of the question. Obviously, I'm putting up a random set of cards Probably with no particular that. context of a real question. Mm -hmm. But it is interesting, isn't it? How, and this is again reinforcing my point about not just this divination system, but really any of them. How much we bring to, you know, to the reading our own internal interpretations and projections onto them. Mm -hmm. And that th that is an appropriate mirror in itself. You know, that doesn't necessarily mean good or bad or illuminated or shadow or anything like that. It just is um, the slant which we bring to it, and that is giving us some kind of feedback. And then how we evaluate that feedback is up to us. Mm -hmm. All right, next one, another three-card spread. You're probably all familiar with this one, right? This is a pretty common one <laughs> in lots of different divination systems. You know, relationship, you, other, and then the relationship itself. Okay, so um, if you were to look at this, you, you, you can manufacture a question in your head if you want to. It doesn't matter. Um, here's you, elder, positive pole fulfillment, other, growth, positive pole comprehension, and then card three, nexus, uh, negative pole distortion. So tell me about your interpretations. Anybody have a hit? Or... Just verbalize what it is that's going through your mind when you look at something like that for a relationship. We don't know if it's we don't know if they're lovers, we don't know if they're friends, we don't know if they're parent and child, um, anything. Looks like a nasty surprise. A nasty surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Down the nexus hole. 
Not an Nexus hole. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean, Nexus? Nexus means it's an intersection um, where there is an inevitable change, a shakeup, uh, a, a directional recalibration, um, okay. and usually unknowns. And with the being kind of the mirror card of the Tao card, yes, which is the all and the everything. This is kind of like the all and the everything showing up well, to really that, this, this is, point. This is continual. This this is the other end of the Tao set. You know, eternal order and continuous change. That's what the Nexus card represents. Mm -hmm. Yes, Rachel. Um, I would interpret this positively that their meeting is not serendipitous. It was planned. Uh, their relationship was to work out prior distortion uh -huh. to their <coughs> growth in, in, in the spiritual evolution, mm -hmm. uh, fulfillment, fulfillment of their relationship with each other, the karma they're working out together, and, and through that growing both and increasing comprehension. Wow. wow. Interesting. Okay. Great. Now, let me, here, let's try and do a little reverse engineering. With a conclusion like that, what kind of a question would have been formulated that might have helped you reach that conclusion? Does one just kind of come to mind? Notice what kind um, of back we're Well, that this looks like an active relationship. Would you agree? Would you proceed if you saw this layout before you? Why or why not? I'm looking at it to overall positivity outweighing the negativity. Okay. okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, good, because you, you see, so the, the way you, you see these two positives yeah. as really being worth whatever that the, the you know. The distortion, and it is a nexus, and you know, the, the, the moving back and forth between positive, negative, to neutrality, and the completion of karma and all that. Right. right. And okay. notice through the image here, gang, it's a roll of the dice, mm -hmm. you know? Some are, po some are a positive face, some are negative face, some are blank. You know, some just might evaporate things. So you could have that. Okay, great, good. All right, next one, synthesis. <clears throat> um, synthesis, then, you have thesis, or, you know, what's the positive or expansionary side? Antithesis, which is the contrary or negative uh, side. So this would be your positive argument. This would be its uh, contrary argument. And then this is what would happen, you know, as a kind of a the neutral uh, a middle point or the outcome. So, when you look at this again, we're not uh, uh, we're not we don't have a specific question in mind. You know, one of the things you could say is, okay, first of all, we see a roll card here, and if you recall, I mentioned that roll cards are in this deck quote, the primary or the uh, major arcana, or exalted arcana, as I call them that. So it's big. The fact that it has a role represents one of the major archetypes of human beingness. And that's in the expansionary part. So something about warming up our role, and it's in the positive pull itself. So it's something about, um, you know, ramping this up. By contrast, we have a body type in the contrary position. And one of the things about body types, and the way I've defined them in the cards, is our body types are about appearances, as much as they are about physical health. So the question is, you know, does the weight of this roll card, this exalted arcana, compared to this body type card, which is suggesting a certain kind of appearance, you know, overwhelming, you know, what would you say the balance between those two are? Which, which strikes you as more significant? I grant you, I'm sorry, I know I biased it by the way I presented it, but... Anything? Well, right, the warrior, the warrior of persuasion can be overwhelming. <laughs> mm -hmm. that's, and that's true, too. And that's true, too. Yes, yeah, wouldn't yeah. that be an interesting contrast? Yes, it certainly can be. Yeah, warrior of persuasion. <laughs> we'll do what I say. And they put coercion even more. <laughs> and humility might be the path to take. Right. Interesting. Okay. Because if you came from a more humble place, you wouldn't be so overwhelming. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Because you're not Lovely. taking on too much, right? right? In that regard, it would act as a catalyst. Yes. Instead of be the end result of, say, a synthesis. Okay, very good. Very good. How do I keep it from getting overwhelming? I apply the humility and a bit of persuasion. Cool. Yeah. 
How you liking this process? Just kind of going through and seeing how you can kind of pick these apart. Okay, good. All right, next one. Uh, time trajectory spread, again, one of the older kind of natural ones, right? Past, present, future. Pardon me. Um, what do you guys see? So whatever kind of whatever kind of question was asked, it has a timeline, you know, in it. You're asking about, um, you know, before, now, and after. Um. So, very simple with the in the past, you know, you came from arrogance, which you know is fear based. Mm -hmm. You, you actually fear there's something wrong with you. <laughs> and, you know, now you've actually matured past that particular position. And where you're going is to really understand uh, what love is all about. You know, to love yourself. So then when you love yourself, you love others. So you can knock off the arrogance. Good, good. Anyone else? Who's the image for narcissism? Oh, I actually, this, <laughs> that is not this fellow, <laughs> I know. let me tell you what this is. This is a photograph I took at the Palace of Versailles um, of some of the reenactors oh. uh, that would walk around dressed up as French aristocracy. Oh, gotcha. And they were, and this this guy, I mean, he had full eye makeup on and <laughs> lipstick, and, and, and he was wearing silk. And uh, I, don't, I forget what they call the you know, kind of fluffy thing, you know, and the cravat. Co yeah, kind of yeah, yeah fluffy yeah. cravat, you know. I mean, oh my God, this guy was just—he was stuck on himself in this part, you know. And <laughs> and, and, and as a soon as I is exactly a Papa Jay. I saw that <laughs> and I and I just snapped that picture of him because it said I said yes, this That's narcissism. This is narcissism, you know. Um, that was an aha moment. <laughs> that was an aha moment, yes. And it was the same trip that I yes. took the uh, fateful picture of, <laughs> of Fifi's leftovers. Uh, <laughs> all right. Okay, great. Let's go on another one. It's Parisian poop. So, um, karma action spread. Now, this is a very, <clears throat> this is a very dynamic one because it gives you, this is what you got to do to break up the situation. So if you actually are, you know, really serious about wanting to define a circumstance where you say, all right, I'm stuck. You know, I've got, I'm at a loggerheads with something or somebody, or, you know, in some kind of interaction, what have you. So here's you. Here's other. Here's the issue. Kind of an interesting issue, isn't it? It's about, it's about who you are. It's about essence coming through. And then... Here's your audacity, your risk card. Let me just say a moment about this because um, we have we have this action that has a negative pole of belligerence, which is a, you know of course aggression mode is very strong, very strong. There's 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 not too much neutrality or uh, mistaking what that means, right? By the way, <laughs> this gorilla, he was from he's uh, from one of the na major zoos. You know what his name is? Michael. <laughs> when I found that picture, I just went, this is fabulous. Okay, I know, and he's just looking at you. Right, motherfucker. <laughs> sure. So, um, my, my, in the same way that we've been talking on and off here, it may be that sometimes <clears throat> you take a stand and you don't back down. And as a matter of fact, you may even get, have to get into somebody's face. And that may be what it's called for, even though it isn't, you know, new age nice, as I like to call it. Well, we should sit down and, like, fluff each other's oars and share granola. You know, talk about our... You know, yeah, some people just aren't going to buy that. Um, we just elected one of those. Uh -huh. You know, so, uh, anyway, that may be the course of action.